If you are in a place where it is appropriate, safe, and comfortable for you to do so, please close your eyes and begin to take some long, slow, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more light and peace entering your body and mind. With every exhale, feel like you're allowing yourself to just drop away all tension in anything you do not want, inhaling peace and light and exhaling as you let go. We picture ourselves on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. In the center of our circle, a bonfire blazes forth, lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust, and it safely and easily burns away everything unlike itself, leaving us safe and serene. Into the sacred space, we invoke the presence of our Creator. To many of us, our Creator reveals themselves as a mother and father, a god and goddess. Into the sacred space, we also invite the presence of our angels, our teachers, our guides. We ask that we be guided and led as we walk upon the path, becoming happier, wiser, more peaceful, and more loving people. Thank you very much. Together we all say, blessed be. Welcome to the Astral Projection course. This is a course that's been a long time in the writing, and I wanted to make sure that I gave you everything I know, because Astral Projection was one of the first skills that my teacher made sure that I understood as being important. And so I'm going to just give it to you the way it was given to me. I'm going to teach you the way I learned it. Astral projection is more than just learning how to project out. Astral projection is all about learning how to navigate the inner planes. And those inner planes enable you to access profound and subtle states of consciousness. Astral projection isn't just a skill, but it's an art form. And like any art form, it requires patience and practice and dedication. Astral projection is the crux of most occult studies because it's through the accessing of those inner planes that you are able to raise consciousness and access different areas within the hermetic tree of life, etc. So this is a five-week course, and we're going to give you several different techniques for accessing these planes, and we'll also give you some techniques for what is known as astral time travel, and that's in Lesson 5, and that's essential for things like past life recall. And with that, we work with our birth angels. So those of you that are working the angel course will specifically be interested in lesson five because the birth angels are also a part of that lesson. And we will be working with the trident of Paracelsus and its accompanying tree of life talisman. So this is a course geared for beginners, but it's also helpful to those that have more experience on the astral as well because it may be a bit more comprehensive than the training that you might have received in the past. So it's important that before we start on this journey that we just clear our minds of any preconceived ideas of what astral travel means and also put a pause on any apprehension and fear about astral travel and look at it with fresh new eyes. You can think of the astral planes as being inner planes. So the highest plane you can look at as being in the center of a series of concentric circles and the physical plane as being the outermost circle. So when we think in terms of astral planes, don't think of upper and lower in a linear way. What you see around you is the physical plane, but think of it as being the tail end of a group of inner planes that start with the causal plane, which is in the center, the most inner plane. And that's why when you hear that phrase, the kingdom of heaven is within you, it's really an occult truth. It's actually telling you where that is, that at the center 
of our being is oneness. If we can allow ourselves to go very, very deep within ourselves, we can find a place where there is all oneness and where everything exists, and that is the causal plane. Now, these planes here that I'm showing you are the names that I was given, and there's nothing sacred about these names. In fact, different psychics and mystics and other spiritual seekers have explored these inner planes for millennia, and they've come up with all kinds of different names for them, many different numbers of planes. And so it can get really confusing when you're reading about astral planes because so many different perspectives exist, and that's because everybody's got their own perceptions of what they experience. So I'm just giving you the planes as they were taught to me, but there's nothing dogmatic or anything like that about these. But this is a good starting point. Mastering occult knowledge is not simple. It's not easy. But you can do it, and we all can attain enlightenment by keeping our minds open and keeping our focus and staying with it and practicing, just like practicing an instrument. So starting with the center is the causal plane. That's where all is one. So that would be where God exists, if you will. The next plane is the soul plane. And that's where you start to have an individual identity, where infinite intelligence is expressing itself as you. And then from there is the mental plane. And that's where you start to have a mind. Then the upper astral is where you start to have some some more identity. The lower astral is where you start to have even more personal identity. The etheric plane is where the physical world starts to have its form. The etheric plane is where we're going to spend most of our time. And then there's the physical plane. It's important to understand that each plane is the cause of the plane beneath it or outside of it. The causal plane is the cause of the soul. The soul is the cause of the mind. The mind is the cause of the astral. The astral is the cause of the etheric. The etheric is the cause of the physical. That's just a way of wrapping your head around the idea of the inner planes. As the planes get higher and higher, physical forms dissolve. So the higher you go, the less form there is, and pure forces are then more apparent. And so this is why it's very challenging to progress very far in astral projection beyond the lower astral plane. Because after you get out of the lower astral plane, there aren't as many forms and things that differentiate. And there's different ways of perceiving things than what we are accustomed to with our physical senses. And so that's where a lot of times people can seem to to get stuck. What we want to do is allow ourselves to have an open mind and a sense of exploration. And that way we aren't imposing preconceived notions as to what those upper planes are supposed to to look like. And that's how you can find entrance into those upper planes by allowing them to be exactly what they are. You're always connected to the higher planes. It's just that you don't necessarily understand what they are because they don't make sense from our perspective here. Astral projection is simply the shifting of your consciousness from one plane of existence to another. And you have to recognize that you're functioning simultaneously on all these planes of existence at once. So it's natural to, to be afraid and have some anxiety around things like this, but don't give those fears too much weight. Just allow yourself to take some breaths and to open your mind and realize there's nothing to fear. When people have inadvertently projected into planes that they don't understand, they got afraid. And then they told their friends it's dangerous <laughs> in the astral. And there's all kinds of horrible things that can happen in the astral, so don't do it. And so, the, therefore, a lot of stories have gotten told over the centuries that are not accurate about the astral. And so people are afraid that there's some danger involved in the astral planes, but there is no danger whatsoever in the astral. During an astral projection, for instance, a lot of people say you're going to leave your body open to being possessed by a spirit. 
People that say that don't understand what astral projection is. You can't leave your body unprotected. What you can do to project astrally is redirect your mind to an alternative state where you're already existing. There's no harm to your body that can happen because you're projecting astrally any more than your body could be harmed because you're having a dream at night. Through doing this work, you're going to discover how the physical world we perceive isn't what we perceive. It's not what it seems. And that's one of the most wonderful reasons for working on astral projection is that you finally get to realize that the physical world is not all it's cracked up to be. But you'll never know that until you are able to go and have experiences in other realms and then look back at the physical world and see it for what it is. It's easy in the physical world to say, oh, this is just an illusion, or oh, this isn't what it seems, or, or I know this is just a bunch of electrons. It's one thing to say that, but once you've projected into the plane above the physical world and look back, you can see, oh, I understand now. I understand what all that means. It's sort of like trying to tell someone what it's like to be in love. You can tell about it, you can sort of have an idea about it, but until you experience it, it doesn't really mean anything. And the same thing with astral projection. In working with astral projection, what we learn how to do is what I call living from the inside out. You start learning how to live within your center and allow the physical world to be literally what it is. And that's just a manifestation of the outermost plane. The physical plane is the place where everybody's used to living. But when you start working on the astral, you recognize that the lighter and deeper planes that exist within you are the causative elements and that the physical is the only plane that isn't causative. There is no causation because it is the end of the line in manifestation. So our goal with working on the astral is definitely to have fun. It is a lot of fun to be on the astral, but it's also a lot of work. And ultimately, what we want, in addition to having a lot of fun and doing a lot of work, is to grow, to grow spiritually and grow in understanding. Now, the bulk of our work is going to be on the etheric plane, And that etheric plane is that next layer that is within us. Now, I like to think of the causal plane as existing somewhere right behind my heart. That's where I like to believe that that God, or whatever you want to call it, exists, is inside my heart, way deep within me, and that everything else emanates from that. I don't think of infinite intelligence as being sourced somewhere up in the sky, like is always taught. I always think of infinite intelligence as being the source of each of us deep within us. And I find that the space right behind my heart in that other world, in that heaven world, if you will, that's where it exists. If you want a physical location for the upper planes and that everything radiates out from that. So the etheric plane is the plane that is constantly at the ready to make the physical happen. So the reason why we want to focus more on the etheric plane than anything else is because it gives us a frame of reference that is understandable. Because the physical plane is the replica, the physical replica of what's in the blueprint of the etheric It can look identical. It doesn't have to look identical, but it can look identical to the physical. So it's the easiest, most accessible way of exploring these inner planes. It's a gateway where we spend a lot of time because that's where you're going to gain all your skill sets so that going higher is going to be much easier and more natural for you. So it's important to establish very strong foundations and fundamentals in the exercises that I give you so that you can navigate that etheric plane very well. When I was being initiated back in the day, part of what I had to go through was a series of tests where my teacher would put objects on 
the, her altar. And she'd say, you have to fly through the etheric and report back to me tomorrow what I put on my altar. That way she knew that I had mastered the fundamentals of flying on the etheric. And even though maybe you don't have that kind of a relationship with a teacher, you can do that for yourself or you can work with a partner to do those kinds of things yourself to test yourself once you get skilled at working on what I call etheric flying. Because etheric flying is one of the most basic fundamental exercises. And I would rather you spend a long time on really honing your skills at etheric flying than to go too far into some of the other exercises too soon. Because if you can get those basics done first, that basic ability, that etheric flying, boy, you're going to really save yourself so much time. It's important to understand that the etheric plane is not only just a stepping stone to higher levels of awareness, which it is, but it's also where all psychic phenomena exist. It's where all of that ESP comes from. So all your clairvoyance, precognition, intuition, mind reading, remote viewing, all that kind of stuff happens as a result of your connection to being aware of what's going on on the etheric plane. It's very important that you have these fundamentals really solidly built and there's no rushing you take as long as you need to take to really get the skill going. It's just like playing the piano or the violin, or you could even think of like bodybuilding. So here I've got five lessons, let's say, in bodybuilding. Nobody would expect you to have that body built in five weeks, right? So this can take years of practice, and that's fine. You want to take as long as it takes. It's a way of living. It's a way of being that increases your magical abilities. And you'll see why very soon. It's important to understand that the etheric plane is the causative plane for the physical. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to magicians is because you're not only able to fly around on the etheric plane and see things and and get information, but you're able to go to the etheric plane and establish new thought forms and to rearrange things. You could even see how things are about ready to manifest and say, whoa, 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 we don't want that. Let's do this and and change them. So it's essential to understanding how magic works to have some adept abilities to navigate that etheric plane. There's a concept that I want to introduce, and it's something that you're going to work with forever (laughs) on one level or another, and it's the concept of astral cords. Astral cords are like threads of energy that connect us to the physical world. They are an essential function of the etheric plane. It's a subtle energy layer that surrounds and interpenetrates the physical world. It's the go-between between between the physical and the non-physical, the physical and the etheric. And astral cords are what create and maintain a status quo in the physical world. And astral cords are created through repetition through repetition. And you can see that the human race has very intense astral cords that it has established through repetitive thoughts and behaviors by the human species over its entire existence. But we also have our own personal astral cords that we have created by repetition of certain thoughts and certain actions over our lifetimes. So the good news about that is that if there are things that you desire that you do not have, you can learn to consciously create astral cords to not only have the thought form in the etheric, but you can establish astral cords in the etheric to make sure that not only are those things manifest in the physical, but that they have substantial manifestation that can withstand the test of time. For instance, if you needed a new job, 
you could create astral cords for that new job so that when that job came and manifest, it not only manifested in the highest way possible, but that it had staying power. It was something that you could rely on. Conversely, we have astral cords that tie us to negative things like habits and occurrences and circumstances in our lives. And so the other part of learning about astral cords is that we are capable of dissolving astral cords from our lives that allow us to eliminate circumstances that we do not want and habits that we do not want, relationships that we do not want. So we can establish cords and we can eliminate cords. We establish cords by repetition. We establish astral cords through repetition of a thought or action. And when there is emotion attached to the repetition of that thought and action, those cords become extremely powerful. Now, we dissolve astral cords from things that we do not want by starving them out, by withdrawing our energy and attention from them, by no longer repeating thoughts or actions. And we pull those cords out like weeds. And that's one of the reasons why, for instance, when you quit smoking, there is no quitting smoking that works as well as cold turkey. (laughs) Because what you're doing is starving those cords by immediately removing your repetition of that activity. Now, where people have a problem with that is that because of the addictive nature of that behavior, those cords are not always starved out because we don't have a no-contact policy with the thoughts about them, with the thoughts of smoking. We keep thinking about it, right? And so then that's another way that we keep feeding the negative cord. We have to learn how to pivot completely when we're giving up something like smoking so that when even the idea of the cigarette comes in to our mind that we focus on a different thought and we start to, instead of reanimating the cord that we are trying to eliminate, we are animating a new cord in the astral plane of something that we do want. So that's the idea of etheric cords. They work on so many different levels, but what they do is they establish and maintain physical status quo. And we can, through mastery, learn to rearrange those cords as we decide that we like them. Now, that's a lot of work. It takes a lot of training. It's In theory, it's easy, but it's not always so easy to do. And that's why people who have mastery over their physical universe through these techniques are called adepts or masters because they've mastered it. It's not something that just happens. It's something that takes a lot of dedication, a lot of work, and a lot of practice. But boy, is it worth it. So that's the basis of the theory behind what we're going to be studying. We're going to be taking most of our experience in this course projecting onto the etheric plane and learning how to establish and or eliminate cords in the etheric plane. Now, the first thing we're going to learn starting next lesson is how to fly, how to fly on the etheric plane. So it's called etheric flying. I'm going to give you very specific instructions, and it's going to take some practice, and you may not get it right away, but you will get it if you do what I tell you how to do. There will be, there's none of this, maybe this will work, maybe that'll work. No, this will work. It's going to take you practicing. Just like if you do push-ups, you're going to get pectoral muscles built. You know, if you do sit-ups, you're going to get strong abdomens. If you do the exercises I give you, you will be flying on the etheric. And because you're flying on the etheric, you're going to be able to start to have discovery and mastery over your life in a new way. Then we're going to go more into the dream world and, and see where dreams and astral travel coincide. That's going to be on lesson three, and I'm going to give you all kinds of ways that you can work with your dreams and work with lucid dreaming, or what I call dream projection. And then on the next lesson, we're going to work on 
probably one of the most important parts of this study, and that's called Building Your Body of Light. And you're going to learn how to build your body of light. You're going to be learning what sending the fetch is. You're going to be learning how to use your body of light both as a method of connecting with your higher self and also as a familiar to actually create practical experiences in your life from the etheric plane. On the last lesson, we're going to go deeply into how you can work with your angels on astral time travel to get information about past lives and how that past life information can actually enhance your work in this life. So rather than just being some sort of fun pastime learning about past lives, you're actually going to be able to travel back into time and also into the future to see who you are as a whole and start to get a better idea of your soul and its purpose on this earth. And boy, that can really make a big difference in the way that you operate in this life. So this is a fun and very powerful, very impactful journey that we are about to embark. So I hope that you enjoy it. And we will start with the practical exercises next week. Four more weeks of practical exercises and you'll be soaring on the etheric plane by the time we're done. So thank you so much for joining us today. Until next time, blessed be. (laughs) 